Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 85 of Closer to God. This is the positive side of Facebook. So let's go into uh, prayer here with the Lord to prepare for today's lesson. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lessons that you give to us through your holy word. Help us to be good students where we pay attention and we try to hear the words that are being spoken to us by you through your holy Bible so that we can glean from them the things that you want us to understand and to appreciate from the verses that we are discussing today. We ask your Holy Spirit to guide us in this effort, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we're starting Acts chapter 3 today, a new chapter, and this is where Peter heals a crippled beggar. So chapter 3, verse 1. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in a 3 o'clock prayer service. So, you know, here we have them attending prayer services. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. Sorry. Here we have these guys uh, going and attending prayer services. So, you know, they're still practicing uh, their faith, but they're also looking for opportunities for the Holy Spirit to guide and direct them in the ministry that Jesus has called them to continue on his behalf. Okay. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting a gift. But Peter said, I don't have any money for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. So here's a guy who is disabled, and he really can't go out and work to earn money and earn a living and support himself. So he goes to the temple and asks for donations from the public and the passers-by. And he's doing this with Peter and John as they're entering the temple. And they stop and, and chat with this guy. And they say, look, we don't have any money to give you, but we'll give you what we have. And basically, Peter and John knew that they had something more valuable to give to this guy than money. And that was the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And they say to him, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. So what happens? At verse 7 we read, Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankle bones were healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Now think about that. As they were lifting him up, you could visibly see the healing taking place. And it wasn't Peter and John who healed this man. It was Jesus who healed this man. Because they said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In other words, we are the body of Christ doing his work in this world. And through Christ and, and continuing his ministry, if Jesus was here right now, here's what his heart would lead him to do for this man. And our hearts are being led by him to do this for you. So they say, through Jesus, get up and walk. And as they are lifting this man up, you could visibly see his ankles and his feet heal right before their very eyes. And heal to the point, think about it, this guy probably hasn't walked in years. Well, it says he's been this way for, since birth. So you know that infants take time to learn to walk, right? We've uh, Parents out there know what it's like to have a toddler who's first uh, taking their first steps. It's always an exciting time in their life. But this man doesn't go through any of that. He jumps up on his feet and is walking around immediately. This, friends, is a miracle. A miracle that only Jesus himself could do. And they did it on his behalf for this man. You know, and, and then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. So this guy gave thanks to the Lord by praising him uh, at, because he could walk. And he that was his personal testimony for anyone who witnessed this particular miracle. But then he didn't go off, off and, and start a new life in that moment. He went in and worshipped God in the temple and, and, and 
took part in this prayer service with Peter and John. And what a prayer service that must have been for people to see this man walking whom they saw at the temple gate every day who could not walk. What a prayer service that would have been. What a testimony that would have been for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So it says here at verse 9, all the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out to Solomon's colonnade where he was holding tightly to Peter and John. Everyone stood, excuse me, stood there in awe of the wonderful thing that happened. So here people are witnessing the love of God through Jesus Christ our Lord in the healing and the miracle he performed for this man. And if he can do it for this person, he can do it for you and for every one of us. So don't think that Jesus is not in the healing business today or the miracle business today. He is. It takes trust. It takes faith. And you have to trust in his answer to how he heals you or what he determines for you. We all know that we have in our mind that we want things to go this way. But we have to get rid of that and say, Holy Spirit, take this in a direction that God sees fit that will benefit the person and all. That's where we need to place our trust. And that's where miracles and healings are able to happen. So till next time, remember, nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ. I'll talk to you soon.